I was born in Tehran, Iran, and uh, we emigrated. I was quite young. I was almost two, and uh, I was. I grew up until my late teen years in Orlando, Florida. My life was a stark contrast between a very rich cultural Iranian home life and Florida public schooling. Like you know, this, this was a very big contrast. You know, between I sort of had a double life. The theme parks actually very much made a big impression on me because as a child I went quite a bit, and there was this uh, artificiality that made a deep impression with. So artificiality, simulation, a fake sense of culture and fun and color and imagination, and then there was my own imagination that was, I think, complemented by that and also went against that. I wanted the real. And I was like, where's the real? <laughs> and so um, I think maybe that it just caused me to go inward. And that's why my work does, I think, have a very interior nature and goes into the subterranean and goes into the hidden and is very much about the unseen things and the um, unexplainable things. There's a place in everyone that has that. The monotype is, is uh, the process of, of painting on glass and placing a piece of paper and lifting the paper and kind of working with the result of that has been a, a part of my process since I was a kid. It's sometimes even been a, a sort of oracle of what direction to go in because of the things that I find within the details. And uh, it's just drawn me back again and again. So whenever I have an idea for or a theme of a direction or, if, or an animation that would sort of lay the, be the basis for a lot of works, satellite works like drawings and paintings or objects, the monotype would, would lead the way. And, and so basically I would isolate details to work with in the mural, the, the window mural, there is like a head-like form that um, I've been kind of fascinated, this bubble, that form that looks like this head planted in a, in a field of some sort. There could be a whole backstory to that, like whether it's an underground space, whether it's outer space, whether it's psychological space, whether it's a dream space, you know, um, what period of time is it? Is it the future? Is it the past? That vagueness and that, that um, openness uh, is something I'm drawn to about these landscapes. And uh, the fontanelle, you know, which represents this soft, sensitive spot on a baby's head of something in formation, of something growing. Having had, just had an infant, you know, a daughter, and, and, and this, just the, the rapid, the witnessing of watching something grow, you know, and, and, uh, and, and the mystery. So there's just a, just a degree of mystery to that. And, and I think that I'm drawn to that mystery. And a lot of the pieces, uh, the banners have a sort of figure that is something between something else. I don't think that it's a clear representation of a figure, nor is it completely abstract. There is a, a, a center, there's a spine, and there's a, a, in, in them that, you know, everything sort of moves from that and, and generates from that thing. And, uh, and then I think that is spirit. I see that as spirit, human spirit, a, a person's um, sort of basis, and then a lot radiates from that. So in, in Totem of a Deity, there is something of a mysterious nature happening, but I see it as a, as a form that has a, a story to it that is, in some sense, abbreviated to this abstraction. And um, I've been working with Velvet a lot. I love the contrast of how it disappears and the mystery of, you know, that blackness that 
that has seems to lose space. So I, I like that contrast that it, it provides. There's a, a figure, Infinity Face, in Company of Statues. Actually, it's a sort of reoccurring demon <laughs> in some of my dreams, which is this person who has this receding face, which is this sort of hole in their, in their face. It's a, I think he represents a kind of challenge. And, uh, and so I, I think challenges are also how we place them, how we pr put ourselves into it, and, and, and our perception of what is challenging. Because I have infinity face as a negative creature, but then it's also in another piece, which is glass person, it's a, it's a female, and, and, and she has a um, part invisible, part disappearingness to her. But yet she has a, a there is a deliberate nature and, and very confident, you know, form there. And so I think it's that struggle sometimes in, with challenges, you know, and how we decide to, to assume them.